whispers red A S M R Hello everyone I hope you're doing well I'd like to introduce you to an old friend of mine This wooden box here This box has been in my life for a long, long time. It was given to me by a very special lady who had a huge impact on my life um, and I still think of quite a lot. She was an old lady who lived next door to me as a child and um, I used to go and visit her and sit with her for hours and talk and listen to her stories she didn't have any children of her own and um, she became her grandma to me and my brother and sister and um, she was a very special lady. She loved Siamese cats as well, and I think that's where I got my obsession with Siamese cats. So, the reason why I thought I'd show you this box is because this is one of the things I see every single day. And don't always notice. It's always there. I don't even know what's in it because I've not opened it for such a long time. But it's just there. And I noticed it today and I thought We all have things in our lives that we don't notice or appreciate all the time and I thought in a roundabout way this was a good way of me and you maybe having a little think about that. So, let's open the box and see what's inside. Um, I do know that it's just basically trinkets and stuff that I've collected over the years. And it's a lot of years. So, first I just want to show you the details of the box. I presume it was originally intended as a jewellery box. I don't know how old it is. I know that the lady who gave it to me had had it for a very long time herself. Um, let's see. I can just show you the detail on the top. There are metal hinges there. And some metal detail the top. I would say that's kind of a Art Deco style. Could probably do with a bit of cleaning actually. And around the front, there's a little keyhole there. I can't say I've ever had a key for it, 
Oh, that there's a, a working lock in there. But it's a nice feature. So let's have a look inside. stands out the most straight away is the is a Betty Boop brooch I remember buying this in a um, in a bank one day they have um, on the <coughs> on the counter of things like this and you donate say a pound for each one and you wear it so it's for charity and this one is a um, breakthrough breast cancer fighting breast cancer through research and education so that's the breakthrough charity brooch and even though I like supporting the charity, I think probably the first thing that stood out to me was the Betty Boop. <laughs> and um, I actually bought quite a few of these, and I don't know where the others are because there are different there are different poses, and, um, different Bettys, and I'm pretty sure that I bought one of each. This must have been about six, seven years ago now. Um, so this one is a Betty, I'll show, you, show it to you, and she's wearing a white dress with the Breakthrough Cancer logo on the front, and I think she's wearing red shoes, yeah, red shoes. I am a fan of Betty Boop, I actually have a Betty Boop statue, she's about half the size of me. Um, but she's in two pieces because my Siamese cat, who's um, not with us anymore, unfortunately, she had a habit of jumping on her head and one day she jumped on her head and um, her legs snapped. So um, I did fix her once and then it happened again. And I've not um, found a way of fixing her again, but I can't bear to throw her away. So she's in two pieces. Um, so she's not on display. But I've always been a fan of Betty Boop anyway. That's a blast from the past. Um. <clears throat> right. Some of these things I don't... I've not seen for such a long time, I don't quite remember. But then other things are just leaping out to me and I just... <laughs> they bring back so many memories. This here is a locket. <laughs> and um, inside is a picture of my granddad. And um, I think that's my dad as a young boy. My granddad died when I was a baby. Um, so I, I didn't get a chance to get to know him properly, but. We did spend a lot of time together because he used to come and see me all the time when I was a baby. I was his first grandchild and um, he was a funny man, very sweet. You can see his smiley face there. And this locket belongs to my grandma, who isn't with us anymore, but that's, that was hers. And there's another one here, which I think might have been hers as well. If I can open it, let me see if I can find something to open it. Hmm. 
Hmm. Now that is, <clears throat> that's definitely my Nana's and that's a picture of her, if you can see that. And um, the child next to her on the opposite side of the locket is, I think, my uncle. As a little boy. Hmm. My grandma was an amazing woman. She was Scottish <clears throat> and um, quite, uh, shall we say, forthright. Um, so this, wow, this is, um, I used to be into a lot of 40s hairstyles and 40s clothing and anything 40s. I used to dress really 40s every day and do my hair. And um, I've lived in London a long time and lived all around London. And uh, this brooch was in Selfridges. And I must have gone out for, I never had any money, I must have gone out for a special day out. And I remember seeing this in Selfridges. And I'm sure it was way more expensive than I could afford at the time. But, um, I remember saving up for it. And going back. And buying it. And I think at the time I thought it was so special that I hardly ever wore it as well. And I'd say that's another lesson. Don't ever keep things for best, just wear them. There's an old saying from up north where I'm originally from and people always used to have their best china reserved for best and their best clothes reserved for best. And um, when best ever comes, I don't know, you should just wear these things and use these things. Because life's too short to wait. It's got a sort of a logo on here. It says Cherry Chow. So that must have been the designer that made it. Cherry Chow. Paris. Hmm, so this, <coughs> excuse me, this is a brooch and I remember buying this from a charity shop actually and in America you would call that thrift store, I think. But we have these um, charity shops we call them and they're Charities open them and people donate things and the charity shop sells them. And this I thought was a, a cool thing to go with all my 1940s gear, no doubt. There's a clip on the back there. And it's kind of um, strings of tiny pearls. Oh, and there's another brooch here. Again, I think from a charity shop. I used to do a lot of shopping in those shops. In fact, I worked in one for a while. Um, wow, well, this is old because there's a clasp on there, but it's like a... I don't know if I can show you, but it's like a screw clasp. You can see that. Isn't that pretty? I probably wore that on a blazer or something. 
or a suit jacket. No, there's a, a hair clip here. I don't remember wearing this, I maybe did. Um, sometimes maybe at the side, like this. That's an Art Deco style, I think. Hair clip. blue and silver um, that's a box <laughs> with random fake pearls in there, I'm not sure why that's there I must have liked the box and maybe kept the pearls for something if I decided to make a necklace, maybe. Um, spare buttons. That looks like spare buttons for jeans. Metal plus. Some rings here. I think that some of these rings are from my grandma. Oh gosh, this one. <laughs> I've forgotten about this one. Oh my gosh. Um, this is a silver, a silver ring. If it's on my little finger, this ring. Um, an old boyfriend bought this for me. I think I was 15 or 16 at the time. Um, right before he dumped me, I think it was. <laughs> it, but he was really proud of himself for buying that, and it didn't fit me because <laughs> I've got quite wide fingers. He didn't ask for it back. And I'm sure I didn't offer it back. That's really sweet. I'll never forget that. Yeah, these rings here I'm sure are from my grandma, probably. That one is probably from actually um, a market or something. That rings a bell, I think it's from a market. One is probably from my grandma. It's very big. And it's adjustable. She had wide fingers as well. <laughs> we call them builders' hands. It's quite pretty. I More little rings. That's another one. I don't really remember that one, but I'm sure that was from my grandma. She had so much jewellery, it's unbelievable. Lots and lots of costume jewellery. There's another one there. wear any of this stuff. There's a chain with nothing on the end. That needs something to, to fit. 
likes it. Silver chain there, but I'm not sure if that's real silver or not. Could be. Yeah, I think it is actually. And if I remember rightly, this might be from my Nana, the lady who gave me this box. I think it is. It's very thick. It's quite short, so maybe that's why I haven't worn it very much. But it's nice. Another little chain. It's got a knot in it. Some of these chains will be from necklaces I got when I was a child. That one's broken. <laughs> I don't like throwing things away, obviously. Another little chain. Broken again. <laughs> This one, hmm, I think that's another charity shop thing. Little bracelet there. With stones in it. White stones. Hmm. rings. I've got a feeling these are boyfriend rings. <laughs> oh dear. And this here is another broken item. Um, this is a bracelet. Um, I was working one day, I have had lots of different jobs in my time and um, I remember working at um, an exhibition once and it was a really cool exhibition, it was, it was all about healing and health, healthy eating, well-being, it was fantastic, it was in London and um, there was a lady there and she was, uh, she was, um, I think it's called kinesiology, I think, where you, it's the study of the eyes and you can see how healthy your body is from looking at the colour around your eyes and the way the, what's the word, I'm trying to explain it, you have lines in the colours, like little veins in the colour around your eyes, and uh, I remember her looking into my eyes and telling me I needed to drink more water, <laughs> so I did after that, and um, there was a lady um, who made her own jewellery, and she was, um, selling individual pieces of jewellery at this exhibition and this bracelet really stood out to me, I don't know if you can see it, it's all twisted around it needs sorting out, there we go and if you can see there's a piece missing from it beads for that are in around here. There's the string. The beads have popped it in here obviously to fix it but that's not happened. Actually I could probably just wear it like that really. Wouldn't really tell. But uh, 
think I probably spent most of my wages that day on this. It closes like And, um, oh, there's a little brooch here again. It's broken, but I've obviously felt the need to keep it. It's a green leaf. I think that must have been the Woodland Trust or something like that. But I obviously thought that was quite sweet. And another ring. One more ring. someone who doesn't wear rings very often. I've got lots of them. Quite pretty, aren't they? The flower's nice. The stone in there, or the pearl. Pretend pearl. And that's adjustable as well. And that's about it really. There's a hat pin there. I used to wear berets sometimes, so maybe I thought that would be cool to wear a hat pin, I don't know. I can't remember wearing it. I suppose it would be good if you wanted to attach a feather or something to your hat. And the rest, I think, is hair grips or bobby pins. A few of those. And there's a penny in here. I wonder why I've kept this penny. 1999. Hmm. I'd say every year was significant for me around that time, but maybe that was meaningful at the time. Can you see it? That's a penny. Queen's head on the back. So that's about it. some special memories in that box. I shan't be throwing any of it away, even the broken things, because I obviously wanted them at the time. So I'll put all of these things back and next time I look at this box <clears throat> I'll remember what's inside. and remind myself of a few things. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the sounds there. And why not today or tomorrow give someone you love